Greetings, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Incantus Phylacterium, uh, where I keep my words and ramble incoherently. Uh, I did, again this time, create another little cheat sheet uh, to try and help me through. I can't resist. I can't actually speak extemporaneously as well as I would like to. So, uh, what are we going to talk about this time? Uh, I've got bas basically three major categories. Uh, I wanted to talk about my books. We're going to get to those. Uh, also, the fact that I've got uh, merch for sale. Got to shamelessly self-promote sometime. And uh, also, uh, links where you can support uh, support me if you like what I do. Um, that'll be down in uh, all of this. It'll be down in the description below. You can find links to the books, to the merch, to the uh, support um, uh, links to my personal website. But first, I do want to say... Uh, and we're already a minute in and I haven't gotten around to the most important thing. I have no volunteer dreamer for this uh, coming week. Uh, it just so happens no one's jumped at the opportunity to uh, take advantage of my available time. So I would like everyone out there, if you're watching this, please contact me. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm all over a variety of social media uh, platforms. I've got a Discord where I conduct my uh, interviews, and uh, I, I'd love to talk to you. Let's uh, let's get together and see if we can figure something out. Uh, but in the meantime, in between time, let's start. Uh, let's start with the books here. I also have a cheat sheet. Uh, the descriptions of these books. The first thing uh, you will notice is this is backwards because when <laughs> little behind the scenes uh, magic. When I record videos, I see myself on the screen, and I tried. <coughs> I tried recording it, it without the mirror image and it was so distracting to me to see me raise my right hand and on the computer my left hand goes up. So I swapped it around. So what you're getting is actually a reversed image of me and you can tell with these uh, uh, book titles they are not, hopefully you can read backwards. I mean I might reverse this video in post-production, we'll see. And that makes all of this last minutes worth of ranting sounds stupid. Um, but I digress. Uh, this is the first book I published back at the end of 2020. This is, uh, if you can read backwards, if it is backwards, the court of curiosity. And since my extemporaneous speaking skills are horrible and I never know what to say, I'm going to read off the uh, description here. This is a lost work of historical dream literature from 1669, preserving the work of a French knight in an English translation where he details a uh, dream dictionary approach to interpretation, referencing uh, the collected musings of ancient authors on the subject. This is uh, well over 200 pages, 69 footnotes added by yours truly to uh, reference uh, obscure terms, uh, especially words that are no longer used in current current English or, or um, other specialized phrases, as well as many historical figures that the uh, writer assumed his intended audience would know concurrent with the time frame. Uh, so we've got that also a 28 page uh, alphabetical dream listing if you're interested in such things. And then that's basically the uh, first half of the book. And uh, people will know from, well, if, if you know, uh, I have an audio book of the first half, which is just the dream section. The second, so if you would check that out, please, that's uh, it's about just under three hours long. I tried to uh, do my best and I want feedback on that. I want to know, how do you guys think I did? Do you like the pacing? Do you like the um, uh, enunciation of words that I... Anyway, I'm ranting again. So uh, the second half of this book is actually a treatise on physiognomy, which was uh, it kind of makes reference to, in a very anachronistic terms, say stereotypical cultural assessments of people from different places as they are applied to to what used to be called the four humors, choleric, sanguine, phlegmatic, and... The other one I can't remember. Someone let me know in the comments. I, I just um, uh, choleric, phlegmatic, sanguine, and melancholy. I remembered. Okay. Anyway, that's enough about this book. Uh, again, the presentation of these ideas is not an endorsement of the material. Of course, I don't endorse 
dream dictionary approach. And of course, I do not uh, endorse the author's stereotypical assessments of people from different ethnic groups or places around the world. Uh, this is simply what they discussed and believed at the time, presented in its original form. And uh, there you go. That's enough on uh, on the first book. So we've got the second one. This one I am very proud of. Um, I'm proud of everything I've done, but this one especially. Uh, this is The Mystery of Dreams, and it is uh, a basically like a written out sermon, a, a treatise, as they would say, uh, penned by the uh, preacher Philip Goodwin back in 1658, so even 10 years predating uh, the, the Court of Curiosity book there, uh, detailing the means and methods for the discernment of God's true visions from the delusions of the devil, whether layman or adept much sage wisdom may yet obtain. And I don't know if you can tell, but uh, compared to this one, it's almost uh, double, double the size. I'll put them next to each other here. So this one's about, Court of Curiosity was about 200 pages. This one's about 380, 379. Um, so what we've got here is uh, 379 pages, 265 footnotes, again, detailing archaic terms and historical figures. And this guy knew his stuff. He referenced a lot of, uh, one of the most interesting things to me about this was learning of the, uh, what were called the Anabaptists, people who thought baptism uh, was not necessary in, in the time frame, And the, the idea that many of these people were inspired, say, by their dreams, assuming they were from God, to take up arms against local princes. And uh, basically, they dreamed that God said you, they should start a revolution, and they attempted it, and a lot of people died. And um, this guy, by reading this book, I learned all about it. And it's something, a historical thing I'd never heard of before. <clears throat> but as I said in the uh, description I was reading, whether layman or adept, and that means whether you are a Christian or agnostic as I am. Uh, and it's funny to say, you know, I'm very proud of this work of a specifically Christian perspective on dreams. Uh, but I'm not here to advocate a specific method other than my own, which only because that is what works for me. Um, and my methods, my method specifically is meant to work cross-culturally and no matter what your belief system, we just get into what is what is your experience and what are what is the understanding we can obtain from working together to understand that experience um but if you are agnostic as i am you can read this book as a curiosity like the the court of curiosity uh the mystery of dreams will be very interesting just to see this from within that particular perspective that framework and most importantly, if you are a Christian and you are, if you look at the interpretation of dreams as something which is heretical, something only witchy or, or sorcery, and I know I have a lot of those themes going on my channel because I like playing with the idea of magic, but I, but I also take it very seriously. You can read this book about how this preacher says a good Christian should understand and perhaps believe and practice in order to make sure they don't get the wrong idea from their dreams. Don't end up deluded by vain dreams uh, sent by the devil, according to the author, uh, how to distinguish those from dreams that should be sent, uh, uh, carried by angels, so to speak, and keep you out of trouble. You know, bottom line for this guy, God's not going to tell you to do something contrary to the Bible. So if you get a dream, telling you that or uh, that makes it seem like that's something you should do. He says that's sent by the devil uh, and he doesn't want you to end up like the Anabaptists uh, getting vain delusions that make you start revolutions against local princes and uh, put people to the sword. So um, very, very proud of this one. I actually shopped it around to local books, the Christian bookstores and said, hey, carry it on your shelves. Uh, have a look at it. Um, but, uh, you know, you can also uh, get any of these books directly from, from the Amazon link in the description below. So that's the mystery of dreams. Probably going to talk way too much about each of these books and just eat up the whole video with that, but that, that's fine. We'll see if we, uh, 
keep this one under 15 minutes or not. Um, this one again, backwards. This is where we begin my, uh, what I've taken to calling the trivium anthology. I've got three books. Uh, they are entitled Oniro Chronologia. What the hell does that mean? So Oniros, the Greek for dream, uh, which is also where we get the term the Oniroi, which were the gods of dreams, including Morpheus, which famously made its uh, its way into um, into the Matrix, of course, uh, which is a wonderful illustration of why why it's interesting and I think important to know history and Greek and Latin and where all these terms come from. So why why is the guy that awakened Neo in the Matrix? Awaken Neo from the Matrix. Why is he called Morpheus? Well, he's the god of dreams. And Neo was dreaming. He needed to wake up from this fantasy and see the desert of the real. But I digress. Anyway, so the uh, Oniros, Oniro chronology, Oniros dreams, chronos time. Again, going back to the Greek or cro root of the word chronology. Um, and logia, meaning study of. Um, thus, the. Uh, psychology, psychology, study of the, the, the psyche. Um, anyway, you put all three of those together. It's the studies, uh, study of dreams over time. And that's what these are, a chronological anthology of historical dream literature. I have my notes here. This one, uh, volume one, uh, tackles 1528 through 1644, including, uh, three shorter texts, textuses, uh, I'm getting dry mouth here. One moment, please. There we go. Uh, the Most Pleasant Art of Dream Interpretation from 1528. The Divine Dreamer, uh, penned by, uh, I want to say Amarat Moishe, Moishe Amarat. Can't remember it, but uh, a letter written from him to to a friend explaining uh, divine dreams. Very similar to a lot of the material covered in Mystery of Dreams, but from a, a, a unique point of presentation. And of course, uh, a collected uh, work, the Oniro Critica of Artemidorus Daldianus from 1644. This one's 315 pages, 189 footnotes detailing, again, archaic terms and historical figures. You're going to find a lot of the same people referenced in different books, but again, presented from unique perspectives. That is volume one. Volume two. This one is a beast. Uh, this one's getting up to, what was it? Three Again, 391 pages. Um, Oniro Chronologia, Volume 2. Uh, this is the chronological anthology of historical dream literature from 1668 through 1841. And that's a very wide uh, time frame to, to be covering. Um, so this one has multiple, I think eight, eight different shorter works, and I've sampled certain chapters from other books. It, it was a very common practice back in the day for people to write these encyclopedic tomes where they would cover a million things and they would have, say, a couple of chapters on dreams or dreaming or sleep. And so I've, tr I've sorted through all that old material. This one has, uh, just as a, 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 as a sampler, a discourse uh, on divine dreams from 1668. Now that is actually, that's different from the divine dreamer. Um, it has a uh, something called Oniropolis, the dreams interpreter. So I'm going back and forth in this one, uh, chronologically going from, say, people that were very focused on the Christian biblical interpretation of dreams, and then people who were leaning in over the years to the dream dictionary or more occult um, interpretation, giving, giving you guys a sample. So the uh, Oniropolis dreams interpreter from 1670, and then there's a, a large jump, and, and the book explains why. Uh, a jump to 1791, where a doctor, uh, a, a person, uh, submits a dissertation on sleep and dreams. And this is his dissertation to become a medical doctor. Um, it's also got several chapters from a very interesting book from 1841 called The Philosophy of Mystery. Uh, they, they, I want to say they did about eight, six six, seven, eight different chapters where they kind of went through dreams, what they mean, talking about different kinds. And so this one covers a very wide range. It's 1668 through 1841 uh, with numerous shorter texts, a, a wonderful anthology sampler 
Um, and again, the same in book three, O Nairo Chronologia, volume three. And uh, let me scroll down here. Uh, again, a the third uh, of the series in the uh, chronological anthology of historical dream literature. This one covers 1859 through 1890. So a, a much shorter time frame. Actually, um, looking at the, the notes here, it's only about 30 years, but there was a kind of a resurgence in interest in dreams in the late uh, 19th century in the 1800s. Um, so this one, uh, we've got, again, material covering the um, it's almost the, the biblical interpretation of dreams and that Christian dominated perspective has started to fade away after the rationalist enlightenment. And now people are getting into the more medical, but at the same time, mystical, uh, there's an interesting thing happening there. So this one has uh, a selection of very serious medical texts. And then again, more dream dictionary, occult uh, type stuff. So that would be the first one, Good's New Dream Book from 1859. Then the uh, Rational Dream Book from 1876, uh, which has some interesting theories. A lot of people putting forth uh, theories at this time. Uh, it has a monograph on sleep and dreams from 1878. And it has, uh, let's see, Lord Byron's Dream Book from 1886. And uh, the very famous and well-known H.P. Blavatsky, uh, her seventh pam uh, pamphlet on dreams, um, which I didn't put a date for that, but I think that was 1890. Uh, anyway, this one is 407 pages, 84 footnotes detailing archaic uh, terms and historical figures. So we've got that. That is uh, volumes one, two, and three of uh, the Trivium Anthology, Oniro Chronologia. And then... I'm actually hard at work on my sixth and seventh books. Uh, what am I doing with number six? Number six is going to be an interesting one. This is, uh, it's going to be entitled Studies in Dreams. And actually you can uh, look online and you can find other people's copies. Be very careful with what you're buying because a lot of people, um, and that's one thing to say about my books, none of these are simply PDF scans that I copy paste and put out there because you can find the original work and it's very hard to read and the text is obscure. And uh, especially, um, let's go back to this one on uh, the mystery of dreams. This thing has a tremendous amount of translated Latin. You, you will excuse me if uh, you are a Latin scholar and it is not precisely correct. I tried to do the best I could. I mean, I'm kind of teaching myself Latin translation with Google Translate and some other other resources um, to give people an idea of what the author was saying and where they got their terms. I think I just lost my train of thought. Oh, but each each of these is, uh, you know, I could just say show show the pages here. This is hand hand edited, typed out, very clear font, uh, legible. This is not a crappy PDF scan. So if you go looking for, back to my point, studies in dreams, published in 1921, you will find copies out there. You will find copies for sale. This will be my edition of the work. It will be very um, edited to a high quality, which is my standard, and uh, very much updated for punctuation and language. There, there was a, I don't know anyone who's heard me talk about this in other videos, but once upon a time, English was not very rigid. And that changed through the years and we get into the late um, 1800s or as when this book was published uh, the studies and dreams 1921 there was still a tendency to speak parenthetically which is something i do sometimes where you you start with an idea you deviate to a tangent and in the same sentence you come back to that main idea you started with but it's just really hard to read so you're going to find me typing the all of these books out by hand putting them in a beautiful format, making sure they display well, making sure they are legible. You can parse them, read them. You can understand what the person is saying. So why have I uh, not published this sixth, sixth book yet? I am finished with it technically, but what's going to happen is I'm going to, uh, oh, as, as I did with the uh, court of curiosity, I'm recording an audiobook this time concurrent with my editing, trying to streamline the process and specifically uh, reading it aloud to myself while I record it for the audiobook is, 
I can't think of a better way to edit these works to really make sure they read well in someone's mind. If I can't read it out loud coherently, no one's going to be able to read it coherently. So actually this final hard pass, I call it going through it one more time to read aloud. The audiobook is allowing me to do a much more thorough and hopefully efficient job of, um, editing. Anyway, um, that will be my sixth book and there will be a concurrent release of the full, probably six hour, uh, audio book at the time of that publication. So you can look forward to that at the current time, the book's about 200 pages. It's got about 93 references, footnotes, most of which I'd say at least a good half of which were from the original author, uh, Mrs. Mary Arnold Forster. Again, you can find copies of, of all of the material in my books available online in a variety of forms. Um, you know, specifically with the court of curiosity, I tried to, uh, find a book no one else had published yet as my first offering. Um, and I, I don't think anyone else did have any copies of it out there. Uh, certainly the, the mystery of dreams, I think is also was very original, um, in terms of what is available for, for purchase. No one else has done what I've done with the Oniro Chronologia Trivium Anthology, um, collecting these works. So you don't have to go and track them all down and find just the chapter on dreams from all these different, different things. Um, but again, you will find many copies of studies, uh, in dreams out there. What I will be publishing is I hope the, the, like the, what is it called when something is the, the best possible, like the best possible, most unique version of this, uh, very proudly displaying the hundredth anniversary, 1921 to 2021. And, uh, I, th I think you'll find this one very interesting. It talks about lucid dreaming and her experiences, uh, recorded as, as a dreamer. Um, anyway, that's just a little teaser of what's coming up. So, we're already way over 20 minutes. Jesus, this, uh, I've been talking forever. So I'm just very proud of my books. Those are my books. You can find all the links in the description below. Uh, also, uh, I hate to do this. Uh, once again, I'm going to say, please contact me if you want to do a dream interpretation. I'm not scary. It's nice. It's fun. Um, you know, one thing I will say, I never release videos without the dreamers permission. This is critical to my ethical standards. So we can talk, uh, please don't, contact me with the intent of getting a dream interpretation. And before we even talk, knowing you're never going to let me release it, I do need to create content, but you know, if we get to the end of it and you're not comfortable, I'm not going to put it out there. And if I put it up and you don't like it, I will take it down. Um, you know, just, uh, as I say to people, just cause we speak on discord doesn't mean you're obligated to record with me just because we record doesn't mean you're obligated to let me post it just because I post it with your permission doesn't mean you can't demand for any reason or no reason that it be taken down. You don't want it out there. Um, this is not the Jerry Springer show. I'm not trying to embarrass anyone or do anything shady. Uh, this is all on the up and up and up. This is all legit. And, uh, you know, I take my ethical concerns very seriously. All that said, yes, please contact me. Um, I also do have merch for sale that I'm in, extremely embarrassed to say this, but I got to make a living. You know, if you like what I do, if you want me to keep doing it, uh, please, you can buy a, a t-shirt, coffee mug, uh, tote bag stickers. I've got, um, you know, I'm working on uh, Patreon subscribe star. You can do donations. I take a uh, cash app. Uh, I wrote venom, but it's Ven Venmo, uh, PayPal. <clears throat> you can find all of these links as well on my personal website, uh, Benjamin, the dream wizard.com links to all these things. Uh, and again, Hey, um, you know, I don't want something for nothing. I'd love to get monetized. Your subscription is, and, and your consumption of my content is if that's the best you can do, I appreciate it. And, uh, of course, appreciate everyone who contacts me for dreams, but Hey, you know, I got these books for sale and I priced them cheap. I'm making like a buck, two bucks off of each book. I, I priced them as cheap as I could. Cause I want people interested in this material to be able to afford it and have a physical, uh, you know, tangible copy of something truly valuable, I think. Um, and that's why I'm, that's why I make them, you know, to support myself, but also to give the audience something tangible, uh, as a, as a thank you for supporting me. So, um, those are available working on book six. Uh, you know, that's it. I've, I've talked for long enough. This is heading towards 25 minutes. That was never my intention. So I'm just going to say, uh, once again, thanks for listening.
<laughs> Greetings, friends. Welcome back. My cat is not a microphone. Ha! Ah. Go on, Prince Boy. Ooh, look at this thing. It's a mess. What happened here? 